Oh yeah! Here we are, folks, back again for another Trap Thirst. Wait, Trap Wednesday. That's right. And let me tell you, I am excited because I got a very special guest with me tonight. But before we get to that, let's talk about this uh, backer kick campaign, huh? You guys are blowing it out of the water. We're at 160K. We've got almost 3,000 backers. 3,000 backers. Oh, you guys really love killing people. I can tell. I can smell all the blood that's going to be flowing once you get these books and you implement them in your campaign and all those 5th edition players start crying because they wrote five pages of background information and then you just killed them right then and there, stepped on a plate, splat! Ooh, really gets my blood pumping. Oh, it's okay. It's all right, Grimcat. It's okay. I know. <laughs> I got a, his grim cat's a little bit of a therapy cat. He keeps me calm. So, and, and, and where are we in the stretch goals? We got one, two, three, four, five of them unlocked. And we got three more to go. Three more. Three more to go. I can't tell you how excited I am. We got to get there, folks. Okay, 13 days left. Woo, yeah. All right. So, without, oh. He's over it. I'm getting too excited for him. All right, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guests. We're bringing on the one and only Steve Crumpton and that other nerd you've seen before, Chris Doyle. Come on down. All hey. right, how's it going, folks? Great. Hey. Lord Grimtooth. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. You know, you. every time I see you, you're always groveling. I guess that's why I've kept you around so long. Yes, my lord. Let's... And, and thank always. you for letting me out of the locker. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, I got to let you stretch your legs a little bit. Yeah. Could use a few less spikes in that locker, but I, I guess... Well, you know, for that, you're going to get more, okay? Yeah, I hear you. Boy, just, and, and just... And just a little bit of higher math, uh, Grimtooth. So with almost 3,000 backers, we have to assume that's 3,000 game masters buying this book. And if the average group has five players, that means there should be about 15,000 victims coming your way. Oh, at least. my gosh. And that's only Ooh. if each, each game master only used one trap. So the numbers could get out of control. 15,000. It's going to be a massacre. There's going to be a just a, whoo, a river flowing right through wherever <laughs> wherever they're at absolutely oh. and steve you've got you're the one who's uh well not only have you have you drawn a lot of the uh, the original artwork but you're helping us out with these new traps yes my lord indeed indeed i'm, I'm making uh eight to ten more traps for you uh based on your instructions they better be good let me tell you okay they better be up to snuff or this is going to be your last Last book. I, I understand. I understand. Now, I, I see. I, I've chronicled your adventures for for decades, and so I have these as reference, so I can make sure that they are they are new and exciting adventures for your for all of your your vast army. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Good stuff. Good stuff. That was back before I grew my mustache. <laughs> yes, and I lost mine. I see. Yeah. Well, you know, we traded places. There you go. I was I kept looking at that mustache. I was like, you know, maybe it's about time. It's been about a millennium. Maybe I should grow one out. I I know you are hundreds of years old, my lord, but uh I first started working with you when I was in high school in 1981. I was wow, but a, child, a foundling. Yep, just a wee little lad. And I learned to to stay on your good side. I know you hate to look into human eyes, so I keep mine hidden like yours, my lord. That's true. Yeah, that's right. You, yeah. Don't look at me. Don't look at me, Chris. <laughs> Where's Grimcat? Get Grimcat back. <laughs> Where is he? Yeah, I, need, I, need, I need him to calm me down. I've also been drinking this. I uh, found that you humans like these energy drinks, and it's really got me going. <laughs> no doubt. Oh, you got one, too. Look at that. 
Hot tea for me. Hot, hot tea, tea for me. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a nerd. So. Don't want your heart to explode. Oh, Soda. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I think we should talk about some, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what should we talk about, Chris? Uh, we talk about anything. So let's, let's talk about, um, uh, you know, how this this awesome here, here's my first question so how did Grimtooth come about Steve I mean was he <laughs> was, was he created before you guys even kind of you know created this idea of a book of tr complete book of traps or did he come along somewhere down the process where you were like making all these traps and we're like we need a voice because I mean everybody who knows these traps books the first thing I think of is Grimtooth so what, what am I about, about to have an order? existential crisis where I found out that I'm just a figment <laughs> of somebody's imagination no, yeah. no, no. Uh, so uh, Grimtooth first appeared in a magazine that we did at Flying Buffalo called Sorcerer's Apprentice. And uh, the first person to illustrate you, my lord, was Liz, Liz Danforth. She was the art director of Flying Buffalo at the time. And uh, she got those so muscles just right. She did. And that was that was before uh, there was even a, an idea of doing a trap sport. So you the, so you're you were sort of the it would introduce the magazine. You know, you were like, you were at the masthead. And it was usually some evil thing, like you're pulling the wings off a ferry or uh, going fishing. And you had, you know, uh, you were trying to catch a mermaid, you know, with a hook, you know, the stuff like that. And so- that's Things I that, tend to do on my vacations, yeah. Exactly. And that's what she drew. She saw you doing that. And so that's where that started. And then um, there were lots of, uh, at the time, uh, for instance, Chaosium had a, a, a book of 101 monsters, right? which were, uh, I think they were done for uh, RuneQuest, but they also had stats for any role-playing system, I think. And then at the same time, there was all the Judges Guild stuff coming out, you know, and they had like City State of the Eventual Overlord. And so, you know, the discussion was, well, wh hey, what could we do? What, what could we do something like that? And uh, I don't know who came up with that idea, but somebody said, hey, what if we did a book of traps? You know, no one's done that yet. So uh, that's how it started. And, and at the time I worked, at the Flying Buffalo Game Store. They had hired me because I was a very polite sort of person, um, but also because uh, the owner of the company, Rick Loomis, knew I was taking drafting courses and they thought I might be useful for drawing maps of city things and stuff like that, which is what I ended up doing a lot of. But um, when they got this idea for doing a book of traps, they, uh, when I was slow in, the, in the, the store, they would say, hey, You've got drafting classes. Can you draw these traps for this book we're working on? And and um, the big question is, I'm not sure if if Grimtooth was part of that book at the beginning, or if if uh, they added him as the, the we started. You know, we started getting a handful or a dozen traps. That was in the idea of says, well, let's give them a voice. You know, let's have somebody be the 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 Rod Serling, if you will, of these traps of the book, right? To to kind of introduce them. So that's. That's how that all came to. And that was all like in early 1980, late 80, 1980, early 1981. And then I started drawing them uh, probably in the spring of 1981 was when I was started drawing them. So, and I think the book came out in the fall uh, of 81. And and when, when we did the book, you know, I remember me and Paul O'Connor, who was the editor of the first book, remember sitting around thinking, Who's going to buy this? It's got no stats in it. It's just got skull ratings and it's got these crazy traps. So you can you can't even, you know, they're they're not like an adventure in them of themselves. There's something you add to an adventure. And we thought, yeah, no one's going to buy these. And Rick took him to uh Gen Con and he sold every single copy he took with him. He had a couple hundred copies and he sold them all. Boom. And uh Rick came back and said, We got to do more of these. And, and that's that's the rest is history, I guess. So there you go. Well, nice. That's yeah, that's how I found them. I found my first Traps book. I think it was Traps 2 um, at Gen Con. That would have been 87. So, so clearly you were still you were still going. And at that point, I, I think I'd known that there were several books at that point because um, I'd been uh, several of them were inflicted on my group uh, while we were playing for a game master. But but I remember just being like mind blown seeing a whole book of traps and system neutral because <laughs> that was crazy. Like you could literally use them in whatever game you were playing, Star Wars or D&D or Call of Cthulhu, whatever. And that, that was great. That's what worked. That's what really worked for them is having them being like you could use it with any role playing system. And I, honestly, I think the fact that, that Grimtooth was so uh, his dark humor uh, and my silly illustrations 
made it so that many, many people bought these books just to read. Oh, you know, yeah. Just a fun read. Even if you never used a single trap, it was fun to read. And people would put them, game masters would put the book on their table before the session and it would scare the hell out of the, you know, the players because they thought, oh, my God, he's yep. got a traps book. You know, so even if you didn't use any traps, it was like a nuclear deterrent. You know, yep. that is that is exactly it, because I remember that showing up to a game and our game master had a book. And he just sat it. He just sat on the table, or he had it behind the screen. But we knew he had it. And I remember when he would go to the bathroom, we would take a quick look through it and everything. <laughs> and we were terrified. We were absolutely terrified. And like you said, except for the fact, I think my game master used several of the traps on us. But you're right. Like that whole knowing that it was in the room and that your game master owned it, that was like probably the worst part. So you gotta you keep go. them sweating, keep them on the toes. Yes. Yeah, and you know, and when we when we first did the books. You know, the first one, Grimtooth is, Grimtooth narrates it, and he's got one or two illustrations that appear in the book. And But people wanted more, and he got more and more popular. Of course, he would, my lord. And um, Who so, doesn't want some as, of this, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I don't do a, birthdays anymore. Okay, stop calling me about that. All right. <laughs> so as as we did the books, we put him in more and more in, in, in visually, you know, uh, we put him at the beginning of each chapter, or he'd be in an actual trap, sort of narrating it again, kind of like Rod Serling, where the camera would suddenly pan and Rod would be standing there. The same kind of a, a, an idea, you know. Uh, and so he, you know, we put it, start putting him on the covers. I think with the fourth uh, traps for Grim Tooth, you were on the cover of the book, and then uh, after that, you were on the cover of every book after that. So um, yeah, yeah, your legend. I'm still uh, getting royalties from those uh, illustrations, you know, because. I had to stand there, you know, while they were drawing, posing, and all these things, and you know, so. And so many artists died. I mean, you, you didn't like. They, didn't, they didn't get it just right, you know. They put like a, like a hair out of place. You know, not actually, there's not a lot of hair on me, but you know, <laughs> they'd had hair. I'm like, we need to give you a hairy chest. I'm like, do I have a hairy chest? Look at my chest. You know? And they, exactly. So they had to not be put down. Muscles. Yeah. So. I was. I was like. The Brob Cratchit to your Ebenezer Scrooge, and I managed to survive that long time uh, and avoid being being uh, you know squashed like a bug all these years. Yep, yep, yep. I, I'm very honored, very honored to have been a part of your legend, my lord. Well, uh, you know, don't uh, don't count all your eggs until they hatch. There's still time to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt it. I do not doubt it. <laughs> So my next question, Steve, is so how did you guys go about creating 101 traps for the book? I mean, was it was it all of the, the design team? I mean, I, I think I heard rumors that you actually accepted um, submissions from the fans in the later books. But like, like, all right, it's 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 not I wouldn't say easy, but we get this all the time when Joe comes and pitches us an idea and says, hey, let's do this. And then we're like, great. Right. And then it's like that realization of. Now, how do we do it? <laughs> so, yeah. so how did you guys approach coming up with all the different traps, let alone the artwork for them and everything? Well, it it started out. It definitely started out internally. You know, at the time, this is the early 1980s. So, we all worked together in one room. There was a room called Productions. There was no internet. So, the typesetter, the art director, the editor, the staff artist, um, and you know. Uh, the paste up person were all in the same room and we were all, you know, sci-fi geeks and uh, gamers. And so, uh, someone up, would... I locked them in that room. <laughs> you did. Uh, and we had to come up with at least three traps a day or he wouldn't unlock it. So, um, no mutton. We, so we started with it. Would, we had some ideas, you know, and then, uh, they bounce around the room. Some would say, Hey, I've got an idea. What if we had a corridor trap with, a uh, with a pit, and then someone would say, "Wait, what if the pit was filmed was filled with uh, whipped cream?" And then someone would say, "What it would say instead of a instead of a pit, it was an invisible glass floor, and they don't know where the pit is, but it all looks like it's a pit." You know, so so and, you know, the ideas would bounce around in the room, and people would come up with these ideas. And then at the same time, in our magazine, we would advertise, you know, "Hey, we're working on this book." If you've got an idea for a trap, we'll put your name in the credits, you know, as a, a you know, uh, you'll be listed as one of the designers. So we got lots of letters in from people uh, who sent them. And then 
you know, there were a bunch of other people that worked at Flying Buffalo, not in productions, who were running, uh, running, working in the store, or uh, which was a game store, or running play by mail games, and all of them were gamers. And so we would ask them, and some of them would come up with ideas. And hey, I got an idea. See what you guys think of this, you know? And they turned in, and a lot of times we would re-edit them and rewrite them, and then even after that, I would get the trap, and then I would draw it, and sometimes I would. I would alter things to make it make more sense visually or to add, oh, you know, let's add some spikes or let's add a, a choppy thing or let, you know, whatever. And then, or I'd put something funny in it and then they'd retitle the, the trap to match the, the illustration. So that the two things match. So it was a very much, uh, especially in the first two traps books, three traps books, it was very collaborative. You know, it was, it was a whole group effort kind of thing. So um, there you go. That's, that's how it happened. So, and uh that's uh, Mike Stackpole um, and Paul O'Connor and myself and uh, Larry Dottilio, who wrote uh, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, all of us contributed traps. Sometimes uh, we would write under pseudonyms and sometimes we would just use our names. So there are a bunch of like Molly Wingworm is a fake name that, that uh, uh, Paul O'Connor used for, uh, you know, for one of his uh, people that designed traps. And then uh, Mike Stackpole had several fake names too, so it was it was you know it was it was a mix, but there was a lot of a lot of different people contributed. Yeah, there, there's even one pen named Jersey Turnpike, which yes. I love living in New Jersey. So I mean, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was Paula Connor. That was one of his. Uh, uh, nice. Names. That's cool. That's that that is that's really cool. And for our books, and like I said, we have. The statistics for the traps in here, but we've actually maintained Grimtooth's voice in our traps. We kind of have his voice as kind of like the read aloud text, basically at the beginning of the trap. Oh, great. So we basically are putting, you know, Grim. He wouldn't have had it any other way, to be honest with you. He's sure. like, you are not printing this book unless I'm in it. <laughs> so basically, we've got, you know, his text. We we have to tweak it a little bit because, um, you know, we're reordering some of the traps in that. So sometimes it's not the third room trap or the seventh door trap or something in the chapter. But for the most part, we're keeping keeping Grimtooth's uh, original verbiage and that. So he kind of introduces the trap, and then we jump into the stats for uh for either five E or for the DCC RPG. So well, that's that's awesome. So can I ask people know question. how I sound? I hope they when they're reading the text, they they read it just like I talk. So, oh, you know, you've been wondering all these years. This is it, okay? Well, that, that would have been an interesting thing to do was actually to create audio files of you actually reading the text, and then we could have sold them for like. Well, make you know. that a stretch goal. I'll do it. <laughs> the audio book, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask how you guys pick which ones to put in the book? So we, um, so we're kind of fond of spreadsheets. Um, I, I have to admit. So uh, I, I have, I was tasked with creating uh, a spreadsheet for every single trap in all of the trap books. Oh my god! Um, yeah, it's like six hundred and thirty oh some odd, whatever. Wow. Uh, yeah, to all of them, every single one in there. Um, and uh, and then in that, in, and we have all kinds of information in there: the number of skulls what book it's in, the type of <laughs> trap and everything. So, and we took that. And then once we had all that, we knew what we were working with. Um, and then we were deciding and we kind of, we went back and forth a couple of times, but we decided to kind of settle on the first two books for this book. Um, and then we went through those um, 200 and some odd traps and we kind of came up with a, what we could like to think a curated selection of 150 traps of, of like the the best of the best hits and and Michael Curtis and myself we were the ones that we just we jumped on a Zoom call like this and we like went through that spreadsheet and we're like yes no yeah this will be good or yeah that one won't really translate very well um, or this one's a little too similar to that one already that we took and stuff so um, it was a it was a back and forth process that we have but we're we're pretty confident we have a nice nice solid selection of of 150 all time hits uh, that yeah, are in that's there, great so. that is great so. Um, so I'm so satisfied folks, with them. So, so folks that did send you snail mail letters with traps written on them and doodled that they actually got in the book as well. Like, th is that true? Oh yeah, many oh, times. Wow. Uh, there's a bunch that that got used. Even in the, uh, uh, even when we did the big, um, the big collection, and I added a bunch of extra tracks for that. We used, we still had the box at Flying Buffalo with some of the little traps and. Uh, Joseph asked, Joseph Goodman asked me, hey, can you go through that and see if there's any you guys haven't used and you can, you know, see if you can use some of the original ones that had been submitted. And I found a few that we were able to use that had been, that had not been used previously. So we, uh, we had a big, I still have the box, we have a, a box 
you know, with all the traps that people had turned in and via letters and fan letters to Grimtooth and a few left fan letters to me, you know, so it was, yeah. So we, 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 there were a bunch of people that submitted traps and uh, we tried to use them and it, you know, we'd often adapt them and, and alter them to make them a little more, uh, cause you know, sometimes they were sent in by little kids, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we would scribble with a crayon and we would say, well, how can we make this work? You know, I know what he's trying to say or she even, and uh, you know, they did, we adjust it and make it work as something we could put in the book. That is a lot of fun. So cool. That's that is that is so exciting to 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 find out all these years later that that's kind of like where some of these awesome ideas came from. It, that's awesome. I mean, that just that just really kind of it, it just really kind of brings it full circle and everything. And and when you were describing your creative process with all the different traps if we do the same thing with our monster books like like same thing it's like you know you're coming up with 500 monsters it's like you can't just give one person 500 monster ideas you get a much better right more it's much more of an organic process when you get a lot of people involved and it's like even if a couple people only do like two or three sometimes it's great getting their two and three great ideas right and then you know throwing them all in and kind of makes it it's 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 a logistical nightmare with that many people working on something, but yeah. So, but we do the same thing. We said, "There's like, well, we see what the intention is, but how do we make this, you know, cooler? <laughs> or how do we how do we make this fit the rules system that we're using? You know, like how do we actually make this, you know, a viable thread or something?" So that's that's absolutely fascinating. So yeah, I was going to ask about the the box because I'd heard about the the story of the uh, of the box um, of of all the where you put all the traps and everything, and then you went back. And was it in the, in the mid two thousands when you went back and you actually you actually have the box now that was the I trap do box. I, I should have brought it out I've got oh. it in, I could go in the other room and get it maybe we do oh. a commercial break I'll go grab one oh that would be awesome so. I'll go grab it if I can find it I, I'm pretty sure I know where it is but okay. yeah that's that's uh, box has been sitting around I uh, Flying Buffalo moved into Rick's house a big ranch house that he lived in and uh, he had a room where all of the Flying Buffalo stuff was and it it sort of sat like a like a, a, a an ancient abandoned room in, a, in a, a mansion because over the years, you know, we stopped working in there. We all were working remotely from our homes or whatever. And so all that production stuff kind of sat there in that room, sort of, you know, just like, a, a you know, oh, this this part of the mansion hasn't been opened in 20 years. You know, so I opened the door and it was all this stuff. So it was, it was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Still a lot of stuff there, actually. Nice. That's that is that's pretty awesome. The love in that. Um, so do you have a favorite trap of yours that you over the years? I mean, obviously you you've you've touched all of these traps at some point or another. Um, is there one trap that jumps out in your mind that you're just like it kind of brings, you know, a smile to your face, or you're just like that is just a brilliant design and whoever came up with that one? Well, I'm I'll be honest, I'm biased. And it's one you guys actually showcased not too long ago. Um I came up with this idea for a, uh, I saw it from looking at the, um, what do they call it? Like stingrays that sit on the bottom of the ocean in the sand. Mm -hmm. And I came up with this idea, well, what if you did that outside, not in the ocean, but in a room and it would lay on the floor like a, like a dirty, you know, like a dirty floor that's blood encrusted and whatnot. And nobody would know. And just like a Venus high trap or something, you get to the center of the room and all of a sudden the whole floor just goes swoop you know, yep. and grabs you, you know, and I, that I, to me, I, I always love that one. Cause it's just like, it's, it makes sense. You can see how that might actually be a real thing. And it's just so creepy, you know, so that, and it's one of mine, I'll, I'll admit, but, uh, that's <laughs> one of my favorites. Oh, that's Do you crazy. remember getting any traps that people submitted that were just so bonkers? You just couldn't use them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Th there's, there's one we use, I think it's in traps. I want to say it's in Traps Light. It's the Bing Boing Bang Bonk Bash Room. That was one that somebody turned in. And it was it was done by a, probably a 13-year-old boy or something, right? And it was all about how characters go in and they fall in this thing and it crunches them. And then they fall into another thing and it burns their ashes. And then it falls on another thing and it cr grinds them up into, you know, something. And then it turns that in and it drops it into a, a soup bowl so Grim Grimtooth can eat it. Right, so well, I mean, they, I, adapted you know, that. And, and, that thirteen-year-old made my day and yeah. my <laughs> dinners for years to come. If, we mild wow. We made that one a little milder than the way the kid drew it, but that was that was probably <laughs> one totally over the top. Well, if you Excellent. could cry, Grimtooth, there would be a tear in your eye. 
But we know that's not possible. So no, 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 no <laughs> tears of joy or sorrow for me. <laughs> well, I think it's uh, time to uh, to put one nerd back in his locker and, uh, okay. and get Thanks. another one out here. So uh, I, we're we're gonna go to commercial break, Chris. Get back in there and uh, you know, no com more complaints about the spikes. All right. I will not, sir, and I will start working on my charts and graphs for my show coming up so that I can totally nerd out and, and talk about the spreadsheet that we created. So, All right, we'll see if I, if I stick around for that or not. Uh, th Great thanks, Steve. You, Chris. So. Now listen here. They don't call it the infamous wheel trap for nothing, do they? Uh-uh. No, sir. You don't want to be in that room when the Iron Curtain comes slamming down on you. And then you're stuck there between crushing wheels and barrels full of acid. Listen here, pal. You ain't coming out of that alive. And if you are, you're going to be a mess. Oh, look here. We're back again. And instead of uh, one stinky nerd, I brought another out of his closet. His locker, actually. So, <laughs> hey there, Joe. How's it going, Grimtooth? Good, good, good. I uh, how, how's the locker been? A little smelly. Thanks for letting me out. It's good yeah, to be out yeah. here in the, well, the wide open. Stuff in my gym shorts in there every day for you. So uh, I hope you like it. <clears throat> now uh, you know, Grimtooth. I couldn't help but notice there was you had a whole rack of shirts in there. Can you show us your shirt? Because I kind of oh, like yeah, how it looks. Totally. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I like. Uh, I'm a little, uh, some people call it uh, narcissistic, but I just call it good fashion. Uh, so I got a picture of myself on here. Do you even traps, bro? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, I got a whole collection of shirts like that. Uh, I saw them in the locker. There were like half a dozen. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You know, it's it's kind of uh, my new uniform these days. So I got like 20 of the same one. So I don't have to think about it when I put them on. Very stylish. You're a role model to us all. Well, flattery will get you nowhere, actually. Unless you're <laughs> Steve. He's still alive. Like 20 years, 30 years later, 40 years later? It, Grim you were talking about, I did the first Traps book in 1981. My so God, that's a long time was. ago. Is that 22 years? Or sorry, 42 years? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, add on a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> so, Steve, I see an amazing display behind you. It looks like every Grimtooth book ever published. Just about, yeah. I um, I thought it'd be fun. I, you know, people used to see me with my hat at conventions, so I thought, well, I'll just set up my thing so it's just like a, a convention. So this is all, you know, these are all the Grimtooth books. The only thing I'm missing here, I think, is the Grimtooth Museum of Death. I couldn't find a copy of that, but uh, these are all the other Grimtooth books that have been published, as far as I know. So. And I think I see like a first printing of the first book in there. Yeah, this is this is the original first edition Traps book published in 1981. Wow. As you can see, um, you know, it's gray and it's it's got this kind of textured cover, which you can't even get this kind of paper anymore. They, uh, but obviously it was used when when Goodman Games published the big collection. We used that as a basis for the what that book was going to look like. And then you have Traps 2. Traps four, traps eight. Um, yep. There's traps the version, nine. Wait, grab your traps eight. Hold on, I gotta grab mine. I think you have a different version than the one I have. Yeah, this is Hold the uh, this is the redo. Okay, we mine is the it. like the one you've got there. That's the 1989 edition. <laughs> wow, you know this well. Stupid zoom thing. Anyway, I <laughs> <laughs> can't outsmart the zoom filter. <laughs> it went out of print, and then uh, I think I'm gonna say in 2012. I might be wrong, but somewhere around there. Uh, Rick said, well, let's reprint that. And we re we reprinted the book and I did a new cover for it that emphasized Grimtooth all the better. It's a great yeah. Grimtooth picture there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. Something that was a candid picture, actually, you know. Absolutely. So, <laughs> but we kept the blood, you know, dripping and stuff from the original one. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, we redid the covers as we did them. Traps 2, we redid the cover in, I think, 2005. And then um, we redid the cover of uh, Traps Light, uh, there's a there's actually a color version of that cover. Uh, this the the one we published in 2000 or 1994 was uh, just black and white with blue the second color on it. But uh, it was amazing to work on these. I I I have artwork on all of these. I wasn't always Traps Four was mostly drawn by an artist named Michael Michael von Glan. Um, 
at the time I was working a, a, a regular job building a pyramid and I wasn't able to, to draw at that period. So somebody else did that. But when we re, reprinted, I, I, I did a lot more art to fill it in, to add out to it, to give it a little more, the same amount of art that usually appears in these books. So, so I ended up in that book anyway. And I did the cover for it back in 1987, I think is when that was published. I Wait, remember Steve. requesting a pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you just got to zip right by the whole build, build the pyramid thing. Can you tell us more? <laughs> well, you know, I was I was I was uh, absconded to a, a, a an ancient Egyptian realm that still existed, and I'm forced to to help design and draw uh, design and build a pyramid. So, just got it. Okay, slavery life, but I escaped. Got it, happens. it happens. It happens. Okay. Uh, Actually, technically, at Goodman Games, we prefer ziggurats. So I'm glad we didn't have to, you know, have the old ziggurat versus pyramid debate because it just gets old after a while, you know. I would yeah. think ziggurats would be easier to build too. You know, given those pyramid edges, all Actually, around, it's tough. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. But um, and then we've got I've got your tomb of Warhammer and um, the world famous bootleg Grim Grimtooth book that you guys. But tell us about this one. I know we reprinted it, but not everybody heard the story of the original situation. I want to say uh, origins in 1982 or 83. This book was created by some fans, and they ran it as a Grimtooth. Um, uh tournament and so they would run they ran this uh, little booklet and you you would run through the tournament and if you survived you know whoever got the furthest obviously won a prize or whatever so as far as i know this was probably only that that origins in 82 or 83 was probably the only place it was ever run and um at one point a copy was either given to one of us at flying buffalo or mailed to us at flying buffalo uh at that time i remember we looked at it um at the time, but whatever happened to that booklet, I don't know whether they got thrown in the garbage or somebody took it home or what, but we never, we never saw it after, you know, after it was around for about a week or two. Um, and you guys were amazing. You even remembered this book and then you, you republished it. So uh, there it is in all its glory. So. And I love the fact that a deal. fan, you know, a fan, it's not quite piracy, but a fan basically pirated <laughs> Grimtooth because yeah. they loved it so much and self-published their own version. Like that's early, you know, early gamer fame, I guess, or something? Like, how many yeah, other products yeah. can be claimed to have been mimicked in that manner? It's kind of a testament to Grimtooth, to your own popularity, Grimtooth. I mean, that's pretty amazing. What we, can I say? Only, people love me. It was the only thing that we got at Flying Buffalo, we would regularly get fan mail to Grimtooth. I mean, it was really amazing. People <laughs> really glommed onto him. And um, I guess it's not surprising. You're a great charisma. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we would get, you know, we would get Grim, Grimtooth fan mail. Uh, besides actually, you know, hey, here's my trap. We put it in the next book. So it was really, it was really something, you know, it was very, uh, very unique for us to have something like that. I mean, can you blame them though? No, no, <laughs> no. I, I've always enjoyed drawing you. I've done it for so long. So I, I, I understand the the uniqueness of, of drawing uh, such a great character as you. This is why he stays around for 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. Probably, yes, no doubt. I'm the sole and, survivor. Uh, did, did somebody have Flying Buffalo write letters back? Was that, you know, was it like yes, a we had a uh, pal kind of thing? It was a combination of things. We we had a, uh, when there was, in, in Grimtooth 2, there was the code. And so we got lots of people writing letters uh, trying to solve the code or asking for more clues about the code. So um, we had a standard letter that Grimtooth wrote for us that we would mail to people that would give them a couple of little hints more about the the code in the in the second book and how to solve it and uh so that was one and then if people had specific questions either me or paul and sometimes mike would end up get the letter and well I'll, I'll do that and i would write a letter you know for grimtooth and then we would mail it and sometimes i would draw a little sketch on it or something and and so we do it that way too so uh, or paul o'connor would write you know some verbose thing where he you know <laughs> insults uh tries to copy your style grimtooth and then and answer it that way too so we did do some of that that's really fun i don't remember was there like a prize for guessing the code or was it just bragging rights i can't remember at this point there might have I, there's probably a free copy of the next traps book or something like that would be my guess but i, yeah. I don't specifically remember I, i'm sure there was some kind of trap because at the time i think there was a uh, Steve Jackson games had this big contest, find the $10,000 unicorn. That's right. Uh, and so I think we were, we were kind of copying that. And so we had, we had it, but our prize was like, you know, get a free copy of the next trap book, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that was it was kind of in that same mode, you know. One thing that's that interesting is that I was talking to Mike Stackpole the other day, who worked, you know, flying Buffalo and, and wrote uh, a lot of right stuff for the Traps books. He pointed out to me that one of the things that inspired uh, the Traps book and, and the way that it, the approach to it was that uh, at the time, you know, there was a uh, there was a uh, um, National Lampoon magazine that said had a picture of this scared dog and it said, buy this magazine or the dog dies. And there's a gun pointed at the dog. Right. <laughs> And that it was that sort of humor that uh, that inspired uh, the whole team at Buffalo to do that kind of approach to things, you know. Um, and we were all fans of the Doctor Fives movie and Phantom of the Paradise and Rocky Horror Picture Show. All of that stuff sort of mixed in a in a in a you know a, a stew of of strange sardonic dark humor, and that's kind of how how the Traps books sort of evolved, you know. So there you go. Yeah, if I can totally. Yeah, yeah. Right. the the gut, the gun to the dog is right up your alley. Oh, <laughs> yeah. totally. I would never do that, though. You know, you know how I love Grimcat. So <laughs> I saw that Grimcat. Yeah, that's a new one. I didn't know about Grimcat. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to ask you about. You left me uh, someone to babysit, and I wanted to ask you a question about him. Uh oh. I want to <laughs> know: Is this your son? My son. Where? <laughs> no, is this the son of no, no, no. Complexion's all wrong. You sure? I got, got the. There ears is a resemblance. The eyes. <laughs> I mean, the eyes are black. The ears are pointed. I don't hey, know. Hey. You know. I don't think we should get on get into on this on the Twitch channel. <sighs> Who is the mother? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thought I'd ask. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. You know, He's paying alimony. He doesn't want to admit it. One thing I, I want to... do you think I'm putting out this book? How are you getting along with Grim Tina these days? Oh, Grim Tina, you know, I, we're, our relationships have been down. Some days we're, we're getting along, other days I want to kill her. <laughs> no, you I know how simply... Her. What's she that? Was she first actually showed up in the 1989 uh, Traps 8 book. And then uh, we retroactively put her back into some of the other books when we reprinted them uh, in the early 2000s. So she sort of makes a few appearances earlier than her original uh, appearance. Yeah, that was uh, against my instruction. I said leave <laughs> her out because she's annoying. I know. She she sort of forced herself onto us. We had no choice. Well, you know, it's that, that's a grim tooth for you. That chainsaw should be pretty persuasive, let me tell you. True, true. She does have a way with words or, uh, or uh, machinery, I guess. <laughs> now, Steve, I see a card deck, too, in that display. Tell me about that. I don't think I know the story of the card deck. Okay, so um, in uh, from 2009 to about 2000, I think, 14... Flying Buffalo in cooperation with the Origins Game Fair. I don't know if this is all backwards for you, but um, we did, uh, Rick would do a set of, of uh, playing cards. This is a poker deck. And so each card had a different game company on it. Sometimes the same game company would, would uh, purchase several cards. And so they could advertise new products or their company overall. And, you know, it'd be the five of spades would be, you know, uh, Mark Miller would advertising meta or, you know, meta um, traveler, you know, or whatever. Or, uh, you know, we'd be, we would advertise a Grimtooth. We made this one the Joker, right? So Grimtooth is a jo the black Joker on, on this deck, and we put him on the front of the card deck. I think he showed up in about, I, had, I, I did a couple of different pieces of art of Grimtooth that showed up in some of the decks over the years. I think there were maybe two or three different Grimtooth images that showed up in the deck. So this mm. is just a regular poker deck. But uh, they used to be given out at, at, the, at the show. You'd you could either come by and, and get a deck if you bought something or whatever. And, and all, all the people who, who bought cards in the deck had cards at their, at, their, at their booth. So there you go. So a rare collectible. Actually, I feel like, I think Grimma Games was in one of those. I think Rick approached us about this, but I don't, I didn't remember that Grimtooth is in there too. It's like another piece of Grimtooth ephemera that has to be collected yeah, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get them all, folks. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. I'll show you this one real quick. I did a, a, a collection on my comic book art uh, back in like 2005. I Beautiful think, 2006. cover. And um, 
Rick, I got permission from Rick and he let me reprint the Grimtooth comic from Traps 2 in my own book that, that collected my comic stuff. So yeah, that's, that's another that's cool. rare Grimtooth item. You know, this is because, it, it, you know, you don't see it. It's not something that's all over the place to find. Yeah, you don't I'm see it every day. Got my face tattooed on them, you know. <laughs> and then we can then we can collect those pieces of skin and make them memorabilia too. There you go. I know you've tattooed your foot onto many people's heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know that doesn't count. <laughs> but so it's been really great working with Grimtooth and 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 all these years, and working with you guys too as well, uh, Joseph. I mean, he's been a part. Grimtooth has been a part of your life now for decades, and. I mean, we've been working together for 10 years, at least, something like that so, on various yeah. projects. I think 2014 yeah. is when we started working on the the, uh, the big Grimtooth uh, collection, right? So The big book. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah the giant one. Here it is. Yeah, you know, we had – that spine is like three inches thick. We had – there were some people in the comments on the project asking, you know – why only 150? Why don't you do like all whatever it is, 400, <laughs> 500 traps? Because we would have they to want, substantially they want a slip raise case the price. This big. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you know, the Grim Tooth yeah. Encyclopedia. Exactly, because that's the version with no stats. Adding stats always adds, a, you know, whatever it is, another like, not a quarter page, but maybe a, a 16th of a page or an eighth of a page of text. And you add that up against X number of traps, and it adds up by the end of the book. I was really impressed how well your your uh, kick tracker is done. I mean, you know, I thought, well, I mean, gee, are they going to want to buy this stuff again? I mean, but boy, uh, obviously the greatness and fame of Grimtooth goes on. So uh, it's amazing. And it's just phenomenal. nothing against Grimtooth, but adding stats, <laughs> it apparently right, makes yeah, them right? far yeah, more useful. Really use yeah. It's phenomenal. It really is. got to adapt to you the guys. times. I understand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, and Steve, you're working on, or you wrote all the stretch goals, and I know, I was thinking maybe, we posted details of the ones that have been cleared, but you're working on one now called I Go Weak in the Knees, which is if you yes. break 180K, that's the one. Do you want to tell us tell us a little, a little bit yes. about it? It's a corridor trap. And in looking at the traps, uh, we had traps that cut uh, people's feet, uh, cut people's calves, uh, uh, cut off their their uh, Achilles heel, um, <laughs> chopped off hands, fingers. We did not have one that that it hit the knees, attacked the knees. So what an oversight! Have, How could you have made such I an don't oversight? Know. How do we miss that? So um, <laughs> make so it up for it now. Uh, <laughs> this one was suggested by Tanya Hapling, who was a, a famous skater. And uh, <laughs> oh god. It, uh, <laughs> It, what it does is it's in a corridor, a narrow corridor, and you go down. Should I do I want to give the full details? Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully people are going to clear this soon. So get so it. There's in a the preview, folks. Listen up. <laughs> yeah. There's a groove that runs down about two to two and a half foot high on the on the on the corridor. This groove that runs along the wall. It's like a whole row of brick bricks is missing. And if you examine it, you notice that it's got kind of like a paper backing. If you if you break the paper backing to see what's behind it, you trigger the trap. And if you don't do that, you'll you as you get about halfway down the corridor, you will also trigger the trap by by stepping on on trigger plates. And what it is is you've got these wheels that are positioned where these grooves are. And once the trap is triggered on the wheel, these wheels, which spin very fast, are about eight ball peen hammers. And so they spin. <laughs> The two wheels and they fill up the corridor at about the two foot level. So any and then they move down the corridor. So anyone who's standing there at roughly average height is going to get knee capped, you know, on their knees all the way down the. And anyone behind him will get it. will go right through the whole corridor. So that's the trap. <laughs> so that's why it's Ouch. called. Wards uh, <laughs> and Hamley to beware because it's not going to hit your knees. <laughs> but it, we, there's not one like that in any of the books. So it's it's a, it's a newbie. All right. So there you go. I That's like great. It, it sounds like it. painful. Very painful. <laughs> what uh no. what what skull level we talking there? Well, I you know it's it's not a killer trap, right? So it's probably like a three, maybe I would say, maybe two, I was somewhere in there. Three. Three, three. Yeah. Because it's not lethal. I mean, it would yeah. be hard about painful. And you'd be sitting and going, why, why? Just like uh, what's her name? <laughs> but um, you know, <laughs> but you're not dead. You just won't be able to run very easily. 
Maybe it feels like honestly is is more of my favor than than completely killing because it, I can hear the the screams and the sorrows and the tears flowing. So the cries of your women. Exactly. Is that what Conan used to say? Yeah. 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 Something like that. I feel like I go weak in the knees should be followed by a room that's like a you got me inspired, see, but some sort of like skating rink, you know, and now you like can't get out of the room because you, know, you can't yeah, yeah. function properly or something. Grimtooth's ice capades. What do you think? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can add that one. But I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll keep working on the, the rest to get the rest of those all finished up for you guys. So uh, the whole world will be ready for them. And I'll, I'll get yeah. got three more stretch goals to go. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll get 13 days. Totally. Actually, Steve, while you're here, can I ask you about the next one, Trapezoid Corridor? Because you're uh, you know, you are the man with the plan here and all the inspirations. Yeah, I'm I'm working on that. That's another corridor trap. And that's one where um I'm I'm going back and forth between having it be a, a hallway that's an optical illusion or a quantum effect where it's it's do it actually is doing what it looks like it's doing even though it's not actually doing it does that make sense and in the end no it that makes no sense at all space <laughs> yeah. so, ah! <laughs> do you remember that you remember the scene in Willy Wonka where they walk down the hallway and the, they get bigger and the hallway gets smaller faster than they get it's that sort of thing only reverse in real in reality so that that's mm. the gist of the of that trap so okay I and then the stretch goal after trapezoid right i mean why not i can't believe oh, it's perfect it. how did we make it through 500 traps and not do that i mean or the knees know. it's it's really <laughs> somebody should be fired for this <laughs> or killed well I'm, well I'm sure grim just probably killed him previously for that yeah why did you put trapezoid in this last book you're dead <laughs> <laughs> well you know, you know I, uh, maybe possibly <laughs> and the last one on that one too <laughs> Statue of Limitations is the next one after that. Have you? I know you had some preliminary thoughts. Have you? I just love that it's statue instead of statute of limitations. Yeah, right. Yeah. Have you exactly. flesh those out at all? Those... That's going to be one where you, where you basically one of the the adventurers gets turned into a, effectively a very slow moving golem. <laughs> that that's that's the gist of it. So, and that's why you're a stat, you're alive. You're a statue. You're still you, but you can really move really slow. Kind of like you know, like the Tin Woodsman from. Uh, when he first they first find him and he's all needs an oil can except oil isn't going to help here so yeah your friend is stuck in a statue for him and he's too heavy to carry but he can't he he moves incredibly slow so that's why it's a limitation statue of limitations so there you go that's, that's, awesome. that's my it's like kind of a medusa variant i suppose in a way yeah so there you go these are great yeah so you know we're uh i guess what do you say crypto we have 13 days left and hopefully we clear all days. these all right, number. It's, it's, like, yeah, it it's perfect. We timed yeah. this perfectly. You did. I'm, yeah, sorry, I'm, on, awesome. I'm on the site right now to see if anybody's back to, during our... Uh, I don't remember what the smaller numbers were and the exact backer count. Maybe somebody back during this. You better have. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> or else. Well, you're getting close to 3,000, right? Isn't that the... Yeah. 2,797? Yeah. Oh, wait. It oh, just somebody just up. backed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just... Look at you. Look at you out there. Beautiful people. That's amazing. It really is. It's really amazing. Uh, uh, congratulations. You know, you guys do an amazing job, not only with the quality of your books, but, uh, um, you know, your your ability to get out and reach out to your fan base and uh, the, the DCC army. And it, it's uh, phenomenal. <laughs> it really is. Really, really is. Oh, things go well. We'll kill them all this something to do with it. Uh, maybe. <laughs> you think so, Griptooth? Oh, listen, Joe, I don't think I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Steve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> yeah. Well, Steve, thank you for joining us today. Uh, sure, you've been absolutely. with Griptooth for 42 years, I think we established. And that's amazing. And we're glad you're still contributing to the book. And I think the fans are going to love it. You have the voice of Grimtooth, man. We we can never we we do our best, but it never comes out quite as I don't know quite as authentic as when you do it. Well, thank you very much. I like to say, uh, having seen that gigantic book of of all the traps, I never dreamed such a thing would ever happen, and it's amazing to be able to have that and show that and say, 
this is my career, you know, at least in my in a way, all in and from 1981 all the way to 2017, wherever that book came out, all in one gigantic. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It truly is. And uh, you know, I, I I'm all, always be thankful for you guys for for doing that. I'm so glad that it was such a success. So thank you very much. That's why we like to partner with them too, so we can end lives and make dreams come true <laughs> in the way we do it. No, no, make right. screams come true. <laughs> <laughs> make screams come true. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's a good one. We got to use that one. Feel free. That should be the that should be the next stretch goal. If we clear them all, we'll have one called "Make Screams Come True," and then you, you can figure out what that one is. I I, I promise I will. He's already working. I can on. see the gears one. turning. Yeah. It, it'll be like it's a small. It. Really terrible things will happen to you as you go through. <laughs> that sounds great. All right, cool. Well, well thanks everybody. Thank you for work too. now. All right, I know we got you unchained and uh, untethered for this, but uh, it's time to get back. Okay. Goodbye, sir. Oh. Goodbye, everybody. I will go back to my slave quarters and get to work on these traps. And you I'll up there the in, the, in the world, you better start backing if you haven't already. We gotta hit these stretch goals. You hear? I don't want to hear no lip. I don't want to hear no whining. Just do it, okay? Yes, sir. No jibber-jabber. <laughs>